Hey guys, just adjusting the camera there. The uh, today's shave comes after some real busyness due to the holidays. Uh, one night packing so late I didn't shave. The second night traveling so long that I was so wiped out I didn't shave. So we're looking at three days of growth here. A lot more stubble than you'll usually see from me. I'm curious about letting it all grow out. As you can see, I've got kind of a peppered with gray. So I'd be, I would be really curious as to how, how mixed in the gray is. Well, let's look at our gear here. Uh, Santal Noir from Mammoth. A nice uh, noir type scent uh, with a little bit of sandalwood in there as well. And this is a brush I've used a few times because I just got it from the 1111 sale at uh, AliExpress. And it's the Umo Knot um, inside of an Umo handle. And this is the Venus handle. And I found it to be pretty ergonomic. And this is the High Mountain White. Uh, they call it the High Mountain Manchurian White. And I've really enjoyed it so far, but I've put this O-ring near the base because I think I might prefer if it was lofted just a little deeper into the handle, shortening the loft a little bit. That's rare for me. And I actually had some apprehension when I ordered that brush because a lot of makers will loft them a little bit too short, uh, like declaration grooming, that sort of thing has a tendency more to do that. And so that's why I uh, with as many vendors as I can, I like to order the knots separately. But this one worked out. At least it's not too short. I can put that O-ring on there. And then if I uh, if I really like it and I feel like I don't want to have the O-ring on there anymore, then I can order that same knot from Umo, sell this brush to somebody else, and you know, then I know the loft setting that I will want to set for myself. Or I can just leave the O-ring on there in perpetuity. The other gear we're going to have is the brushed stainless steel Wolfman WR2. And he's got just a little bit of blade feel. He's not super smooth, but he is a 54 gap, which is the lowest I've been able to find. Um, did I say 54? Yeah, I did. 84. 84 gap. And I'm going to put in him a Gillette 7 o'clock green, but it's the Perma Sharp stainless and so it's a slightly different variation and I do have this one marked as an M for marathon and I think this is either going to be the third or fourth shave with this one I think it's done okay for me it hasn't been stellar and the great thing about the Wolfman is that these four tabs on the corners there line up the blade perfectly. Don't have to worry about that. I definitely like the brushed finish. I'm glad this is one of the, this is a Wolfman I actually ordered, maybe my only one that I ordered myself and didn't buy used. And I decided to go for the brushed finish and I'm really glad I did. I, I like it a lot, both in uh, grip and in terms of the look of it. All right, so I looked at my data and it looks like maybe a 30 second load is gonna be a good way to start off with this guy. This is the Tusk Base, which is his newest one. And I've used this soap a few times and I really enjoy it. And uh, let's see, I did shower before the shave. And so my face is clean of oils, which is atypical for me. And it's also been, the hairs have been somewhat hydrated. It feels dry now, but uh, there hopefully is some re uh, residual hydration there. Uh, we'll be using the Sterling Agar because the uh, Agar Wood type scent is definitely an in the soap, in the Santal Noir soap, and so that should definitely uh, match transition nicely from soap to balm. All right, let us get let me get my face wet again, and then we'll load up this soap into the brush. All right, so we'll take the uh, soap. It has not been bloomed or anything like that. I need, to, I need to use some of my Saponificio Veracino soaps. Lately, I've been talking a lot online about those. And I uh, am interested in maybe trying not blooming those, which is not what I've done yet, just to see how it works. I've really enjoyed the tips on this brush, and the splay is nice and easy. I'm really looking forward to seeing how 
the restriction of the loft here with the O-ring, it transitions it into something that I enjoy even more. Okay, so a 30 second load at the 10 mark, so we'll go to 40. Definitely a cologne type scent with the noir. Um, there were some florals and uh, the sandalwood is kind of the base note. And then the florals are on top and they all combine into not smelling actually really like a floral. Four more seconds. There we go. And this, you can see that my brush wasn't all that wet coming into it because we really, it's, it's not airy and bubbly. It's very kind of pasty uh, and uh, creamy looking. You can experiment and decide, and this could really vary per soap, whether that kind of appearance when you're done loading is optimal. So that may need you need to add, that may mean you need to add a little bit of water to the top of the soap poke, maybe you shook out too much out of your brush, or for some soaps it may be perfect. Uh, you know, so you can play around with it that way. Uh, 3D printed lather bowl, really like it. Link to the description if you want to print your own or use an online service to do that. The scent is uh, nice and strong with this soap. It's coming up to my nose easily as I have loaded it, and now that I'm working it up in the bowl here, what I want to do at this point is just to make sure the water in the brush is combined with the soap and then we'll start adding in water from my little cup down there and I think we're good th for that at this point. I think the water here is uh, not hard. I think it's fairly soft and so I think it makes a better lather here than when I've been back home visiting relatives over the holidays. And let me turn the camera down to see the lather better. So I'm recording this on Christmas Eve night, but the midnight has turned and so it is now the early minutes of Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, everybody. Many happy returns of the season to you, and yours, your loved ones, and family and friends. And see, two teaspoons, and it is definitely not too wet. I believe this soap base likes for me not to go too wet with it. I should have remembered to look at that. Do another uh, teaspoon here. Three to four teaspoons is probably going to be the stopping point based on my other notes that I've where I've used this base. But um Merry Christmas. I am I'm a Christian and I've mentioned that not too many times on this channel, but some. I don't want to you know be be pushy. But uh, Christmas is a pretty special day when God's rescue plan took a whole different turn and he put Jesus on earth to help us all out, rescue us from our sin. And I consider it very important and it's part of my worldview, of course. And, uh, and also part of that is if I don't share it, and, and if I'm right, and people uh, don't hear the good news, then I'm, I'm kind of remiss in my, I'm, that's not a very loving thing to do. If people are going to go to a bad place when they, when they die, and I could have told them the good news, then that's, uh, part of that is on me, right? And so out of, out of love, I do occasionally mention things like this, usually just on Christmas. Lather is 
such a small deal when you consider eternal and <laughs> eternity and things like that. But, uh, but that is our main focus here. Uh, there are various other religious places where you could go online if you have questions, that sort of thing. Definitely PM me in the chat if you, in the, uh, in the comments if you, you know, are curious about those sort of things. And I'll be glad to answer any questions you have to the best of my abilities. But today it's, for the rest of this, it's about shaving. And so this is a wonderful looking lather. As you can see, it's not moved around very much. It's not all that uh, creamy. Now, my instinct tells me I need to go a little bit more. It uh, is, maybe it's, I need to get it a little bit more loose than what I currently have it. Yeah, so that definitely did not seem like a mistake. Look how elastic that is acting. So I think we're in, I think that was smart. We're looking at five teaspoons, 30 second load with this brush. And let's get my face a little bit more wet. And we'll tilt you back up and get at it. See, it's still quite flexible. Do you see how maybe we have three quarters of the tips that aren't really touching my face? So I'm very glad I have the O-ring in place. Feel is very soft. Now the tips just now felt a little bit crispy when I took the dry brush and felt it right before I dumped it in the water to soften it up. What does that mean? Well, that means that the treatment in the tips has, you know, weakened them a little bit and they might have just a little bit of gel kind of built in there. And I don't mind it kind of enjoy a little bit of gel. Sterling had a bath soap sale several months ago, I believe it was. This looks a little drier than I usually have my uh, lathers, but that's probably because of the excess stubble. And with Sterling's uh, soap sale, I bought a few bars, and that was my first time really. I decided to jump into the kind of premium soap market. I've been generally really happy with getting my bath soaps at Dollar Tree, truly. And if I'm going to spend money on shave soaps and enjoy their high quality and that sort of thing, expensive brushes, expensive razors, then I totally don't mind skimping on bar soaps and things like that to help to uh, defray the cost a little bit. I've got a hair. Hanging out right in front of my eyeball. Let's see if we can get rid of that. All right. Looks pretty good. So let's see about the green, seven o'clock, and it's the Perma Sharp stainless. You have to, I don't think that's the typically the one that's green. So obviously it's probably made in some a different factory than the normal greens. We'll see how well it cuts through this stubble. It's not cutting through super easily. However, I mean, just a minor bit of, of tugging. 
but I, I can't really fault it because this is an excessive amount of of hair and this razor might be a really good one to choose for this purpose because it is it, instead of being super smooth it's got a little, little bit of edge feel to it and that kind of aggression is Probably well suited for taking down a good bit of growth, but I've had plenty of shaves where I've taken something pretty mild and shaved easily, you know, taking all the hair off. Man, that's a creamy, luxurious feel, and you've seen me buffing and going over the areas multiple times, and, and it's done a fabulous job of taking that hair off. My skin feels very smooth right now. I bet if I needed to, I could just rinse off and walk away. That's pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't have the greatest of shaves, but I, you know, probably be fine for most people who looked at me. You know what I mean? Let me get a good rinse now. Well, I said good rinse. I meant kind of a half rinse. Uh, I felt good. So let us keep on trucking, and now we'll we'll have a better idea of the lather whether it actually needed more water or if this mix was pretty good I think I'm liking this brush setting a lot better the loft here still splaying and creating a knot that's plenty large for I think pretty much anybody so I like it and I got it at a good price because of the 1111 sale I'm really liking most of these knots that are high mountain white. I seem to be being very happy with. We have five teaspoons now in the water. Sorry, in the lather. Of, oh, maybe five and a third since I added a little bit to the brush. Let's go cross grain now. Yeah, I can feel there's very little stubble left. I didn't really need to buff on that first pass. I could have left some for the <laughs> for the second pass to do, but I just kind of felt like doing it for some reason. Very smooth in terms of the uh, the razor. The soap is giving the razor very nice glide and movement. The residual slickness is pretty nice with this soap. It's it's almost a moist uh, a lotion type moisturized finish. It's not super slick, but it's somewhat protective. Where I feel like you, in in some spots, you wouldn't need to put lather back on, but um, it's not super fast. It's a, it's it's got some thickness to it. So I may be tempted to put lather on in places where I was curious. And I think I have gotten a very close shave here. And I kind of believe that a third pass might be overkill. So let's do my pass right here. See, and I just, this right here, this is against the grain right here for me. And I never can do that. This is, this combination of razor and blade, really quite nice. And the, and the soap, I mean, I, I never am able to do that. I bet that's going to be the best looking little trouble spot cut that I've had all year. Interesting. All right, I'll get a good rinse. Yeah, that's a tremendous shave. I don't even see any tips. Right there, most other situations, in terms of the razor and the, uh, the blade there, I, I don't know what the secret is. I don't know why some razors, I'm able to actually do that, to do that against the grain, but most of the time, it somehow picks up, lifts the hair, 
up to where maybe it brings the skin into the contact with the blade and I end up with irritation, redness, and some cuts when I go against the grain like that. So I don't know, you know, what's best. Is it better to do what I, I buffed that first pass, kind of got it down pretty low, and then the second pass was maybe just a cleanup, and then I uh, buffed that area, I did that area uh, another touch-up time, and then it, it, it took it against the grain with very little problem. I'm not feeling any tenderness in that area right now. Let's go ahead and put the balm on while we're here. Get a good whiff of this soap. Uh, it's really nice. I'm a big fan of the Tusk Base for sure. A good slickness. That creaminess is right there. I think this Agar and Oud are, they might be synonymous. And I find that that is often a very good way to end a shave. That scent I, I enjoy. It's often used a little bit in many men's fragrances. And so I think it's going to be a very flexible balm to have for my own nose to enjoy after the shave. And just about anything's going to work well with it. Wow. Well, a little Christmas present to me. Wonderful close shave. Uh, if I hadn't have buffed so much on that first pass, I probably could have gotten it three in. If I would have just realized, hey, we're not trying to take everything off. Let's just do a, a normal pass. But I kind of habitually, um, you know, buffed at it until it really got it well shaven on that first pass. Uh, so there we go. The You can see the whiteness of the balm, and it will definitely disappear in, I don't know, five, six minutes. So you don't have to worry about that. I have, I think, generated just the right amount of lather for a normal shave. I've got a couple of passes here, and, you know, I, I didn't end up doing a normal three pass. Look at the elasticity there. That's tremendous. That's wonderful. And so even if I needed to do three passes, it would have been the perfect amount. So it looks like for this brush, the way it picks up soap, a uh, 30 second load in this uh, mammoth uh, tusk base is perfect. And I did use a good bit of water, um, five and a third teaspoons, something around that. The uh, scent on this one, the base of course is made by mammoth. The, uh, you can see the A, the P, and is the R anywhere? I guess it's just AP for Australian Private, um, because it's APR, Australian Private Reserve. They're the guys who, it's the guy who developed the scent, the Noir, Santal Noir scent for, it was a conjunctive, uh, collaborative effort for, from Mammoth and APR. A uh, wonderful combination of soap base and nice fragrance. And yeah, like I said, the agar, the agar is, is working really well. Uh, big fan. So, uh, especially on a, a shave where I go kind of against the grain, I'm glad to have a balm to, uh, to make sure that that area is uh, treated well, not harshed up by an alcohol type splash after the shave. So that was fortuitous today. All right, very good shave. So I think this is a wonderful knot. You can see it splays big. That's because it does have quite a good many tips to it. And I think that it is does have a little bit of gel at the tip level, but not a lot. And I think that makes me happy. Lots of bristles. Big old splay there. It is a fan knot. But with, with the way it splays like that, it almost uh, uses, in, in practical use, more like a bulb knot in a way there. So keep that guy around, see how he behaves. There are some knots that they will gel, and sometimes it takes them some use in, some using. <laughs> That's when you combine usage with using. You get use in. Uh, it takes using it. Putting some, uh, putting some shaves in it 
so that it will morph into the gel tips that it will have. I've definitely heard some declaration batches, uh, like a certain group of the B5s, would gel but after a while. And uh, so we uh, haven't used this too much, but maybe something like that is in the future for this one. All right, I've pretty much cleaned up. I feel and smell good, and I'm happy about that. The uh, Mammoth Soap here, clean off the threading. He had to switch away from his normal types of tubs for this release because it was 2020 and, and his, he had supply problems with that nicer uh, pet g type container that he usually uses i really like that container as well so the perma sharp seven o'clock green worked wonderfully i would say that in this razor it feels let's say you have a, a sharp feel and you have a smooth feel i'd say it's a little bit Kind of in the middle, but a little bit toward the sharp end of the spectrum. Of course, sharpness is a relative term. We are talking about a blade here. Um, and in another razor, it might feel a little bit different, but at least in this one, it, uh, it, and so that's why I got such an effective shave, such a very, very close cut and comfortably cut. Uh, it wasn't super smooth. I say comfortably cut, meaning I did not get any irritation doing the against the grain pass in my trouble spot. And so in a sense, it deserves some praise there. Uh, but I have other, ha I've definitely had other shaves that were smoother feeling and were adequately, uh, I was adequately uh, shaved and cut a nice close shave, just not quite as close as this one. Uh, so sometimes a slightly aggressive feeling blade and razor combination rewards you with that wonderful close cut and with some guys with me comfort is a little bit more important but with other guys this combination would sit right in a sweet sweet spot for them because they are looking for that amazingly close cut all right there we go um, i'm a happy camper let's go to bed we've got relatives to visit tomorrow um, merry christmas to those of you who celebrate that and i wish good things uh, for, for those of you who don't, and whatever your holiday festivities are, uh, I know that they probably involve your, your friends and family and folks you love, and be careful out there with the COVID thing going on, um, and, uh, and just in, enjoy each other as best you can in this season. We'll just see how things turn out next year with the COVID. Um, it'll be interesting. I think we're all learning some things. Uh, all right, take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and I sure hope that something in this video is going to help you out, help you with your shaves or whatever. You take care. Good night.